Okay, I think time has come. Uh, I see a uh, big audience interested in the topic. So I'll be going quite fast here because I know that there's a party coming. So everyone are uh, either sleepy if you have jet lag or ready to go. Uh, so I'm Krzysztof Kozowski, I work for Inaro. Uh, this topic is for the Embedded Open Star Summit, but yeah, I was moved here. I take care about a few things in Linux kernel, uh, device chip binding, some subsystems, Samsung Synos. I also contribute a lot. What I'm going to talk about, uh, describe the problem, so sharing a G uh, recent GPIO, uh, how it could be solved, so the regulator way, or the new way, which is the reset controller way. I also have some ideas how this could be solved in other ways. And maybe we need uh, GPO enabled counting. So uh, one more time that this was actually, the talk focuses on device three aspect because that's the point of my interest uh, and ACPI maybe handles it, maybe not. I mean, uh, I know that the recent controller framework way is not handled by ACPI, but yeah, not my problem kind of. So what's the problem? GPO can comes from the SOC and it can reset a device. Here I call it reset, shutdown, power down. Uh, these are actually different cases, but for the point of this talk, uh, it's cutting power of some device. So even though this car can be different pins, we, uh, we still think that it's one GPIO. So, and hardware engineers can come with a great solution that you have two devices and they are both reset by one GPIO. Right, so you have SOC, there is some pin going to the device A and there's also device B, right? So when you reset device A, there you, the device B also is being reset. If you have some bus like I2C, you could imagine there's a, also this I2C controller on this bus and there's a device A on this bus, reset by the GPIO and the same GPIO goes to device B, which, so you reset two devices at the same time. So the devices A and B doesn't have to be the same type from the point of the, the same type, I mean like uh, the same Linux driver. Uh, this could be entirely different devices, different drivers. This could be more than two, could be three, although I think this is quite unusual uh, case. The problem is that when you assert the reset, all of devices go shut down, sleep, power down. If you deassert, all of them are woken up. So this could look like from the signal point of view here, the high level of this reset line is the assertion, so reset is I mean, uh, devices reset or devices uh, dot working, and low means working. So at some point, this device A toggles this uh, GPIO that it starts working, but you have device B, which might do it in different moment, right? The, the driver for device B. And what you would like to have that, for example, so this device A stops working, I don't know, device unprops, driver unprops, uh, whatever uh, reason but device B and the driver for B might operate longer. What you would like to have is kind of logical end for both cases. So you like the longest operating time. So you want that both devices because they share this reset line, they should work with the longest time. There's also different type of resets. It's a reset pulse. So uh, in that case, you send the pulse of this reset, short period, like, I don't know, five milliseconds or 50 microseconds, whatever. And the device starts operating after sending the pulse and you can as well share such line. And in that case, device B will send its own parts. I would like to send its own parts. But because it's a shared line, it should you know, look a bit different on the actual signal. What well, only the first parts should be sent because otherwise, if each of these devices are able to send pulses, then you will reset the other one and you don't want to reset the other one. So what you would like to have is that case that the first parts will be effective and the first parts will reset everyone who shares this GPIO. So why sharing is not caring? The problem here is that also some devices might have specific uh, constraints. When it's reset, then you should do something after such reset, like uh, program it within some time. And operating system should not reset you when you are not expecting it or should not power you up when you are not expecting. And the biggest problem is that Linux drivers don't care and don't even handle such situation. So the Linux drivers are written in a way that they are uh, pure sole owners of a GPIO and particular driver can be used in both cases. You can have a device which is like, there is a not shared GPIO and there can be a case where the GPIO is being shared so you have two devices. But driver is written the same way, so it doesn't handle it as a second case. And another problem is the GPIO framework does not even allow to share a GPIO and more on that uh, later. 
So how would be the uh, device probing look like from that point of view? So you have a bus matching, bus probing, you probe a device for a particular driver. We start the prop function. The prop function usually passes some resources, open a firmware CPI, then acquires these resources, like get a GPL, get a regulator, get a clock, and then performs the reset. Right? And then it returns, exits this uh, prop, and we finish the prop of the device driver. We go back to the next one. So if you have multiple drivers and they share some parts, it will look like this, right? So you have device A, it performs all this probing, requires acquire resources, perform reset, and then we probe, for example, device B. Uh, this could be synchronous or asynchronous, but the point is that it's never exactly the same time. So the device B will do the same, parse resources, acquire the parse RCPI, acquire resources, and perform the reset, and therefore this device B will resetting device A, for example. So the solution which was added some time ago in the kernel is non-exclusive GPIO. But first, the GPIOs are exclusive, so you cannot request GPIO twice. If you do it, you will have error, and this will not work. And this is why, at some point, I think Linux Valley added the special flag to request the GPIO. You will say that you want non-exclusive non task, uh, non-exclusive GPIO, and you should not do it, because if you do it, I mean, this is kind of a dummy solution, and this was added only for the regulator framework. If you use something like this, then your driver probably would be buggy, and uh, you will have here issues. This does not exactly you are allowed in that way to request GPIO twice, but you will not solve the actual problem. Because imagine that you have this driver for the device which toggles GPIO down at some point, and then the prop of a different device starts, and this different driver, device B, also toggles down GPIO, but there is no enable counting. So this second toggle down, driving the GPIO down, is a knob. It's nothing bad happens, but nothing good. So both devices operate, so this is how it, the reset line looks like. Both devices are happy so far. But then imagine that the driver A unbinds, goes to sleep, suspends, and toggles the GPIO up. Because there's no enable counting, this would mean that uh, the device B would like to have it like this, but it's not true. It will not be like this. The line will be looking, will be cut earlier. So here is the ops. So this is why this flags non-exclusive non should not be used. This is added only for the regulator framework, and regulator framework handles it because it has own uh, enable counting, and this is a snippet of device free code where you could actually put the same GPIO twice, and regulator framework will handle it. But your driver should not do like this. Luckily, there is a solution for this. Uh, so with the recent kernel 6.9, I had a work needed for the uh, Snapdragon X Lite laptop. So the laptop, if you want to check, it should be on in our booth in the showcase. Uh, so, we want to hand, use the reset controller framework to handle such GPIOs. And this is purely for handling the reset shutdown lines, and we don't yet handle the reset parses, because there are some kind of issues with the parses, I will mention also why. And the solution here is that the driver doesn't request the GPIO, the driver requests the reset line. I will show, show uh, briefly how it looks like. So. If the device does not have a reset, but has a reset GPIO, then the reset framework will instantiate a reset controller framework. And this will be, therefore, you will be using the reset controller framework, which is nice, awesome stuff, and it allows you to uh, manage the GPIOs properly. There are two examples of this in Linux kernel. So there are two drivers uh, using this reset controller way for GPIOs. And if you use this one, then you will have properly uh, handle the case. So this is the same diagram as before. You will have this kind of the longest period, so the logical end, kind of. From device key point of view, this would look like this. So the old code uh, is like a, this old way GPIO. You remove this power down GPIO and you add the reset GPIOs. Uh, you don't add resets property. And your driver prop would also look a different. So imagine that your original driver prop uses GPIO to get this power down GPIO. But you don't want GPIO, you want the reset. So use the reset control get, optional, and it has to be shared because you want, you expect to share the line. It's, and you will be using this reset controller to operate the reset line. If you don't have the reset controller, then you can fall back to the power down GPIO because this is code showing how to convert existing driver to such a case. Powering down, so assertion of the reset look, could look like this. So this is the old code, like we have the GPIO. 
handling and you remove this and instead you use reset control assert. If you don't have a reset controller, you go back to the GPO old way. So there's a limitation here because this does not handle the reset parses. Okay, I'm actually the reset controller framework supports the parses. So the framework in Linux kernel can work with the shared parses. This is actually supported and it works really good. And the API is a bit different then and this would look like the previous chart. So this is how the reset controller framework could work for the shared line. So this is supported by the Linux, but not by this driver. So this particular driver, which is handling reset GPIOs, does not support it on purpose because the, uh, the parses might have different length. So the problem is that if you have different devices and they, you should reset, send the parse short here, but longer there, then you have troubles. So Sean Anderson tried to do this a long time ago. His work was not merged, uh, but if you never need it, you can go there. So how such problem could look like? You have now device A and device B, you send these parses, but they have to be longer, kind of, one has to be longer than the other. But we don't know at this point, and only the first parse is being sent on the line. Because we don't allow for a shared reset line to send kind of parses whenever you wish. No, only the first one is being sent. So the first device A would be happy, right? If he's got reset. But for device B, this pass was too short, so this reset line was, uh, would not be uh, effective. So this is why this solution here does not support reset parses, but this could be solved if someone wants. Interesting option, I mean, to, to solve the problem also would be to use GPU aggregator and delay. So this is a driver, GPU aggregator in Linux kernel, which its purpose is to expose existing GPIOs to other, let's say, consumers as a new GPIO chip. So the, uh, the main kind of interface is to partition GPIO chips because currently the GPIO chips, oh, we have GPIO maintainer coming, cool. So uh, probably you will agree that currently the GPIO chips are exported to users, some kind of user space as all or nothing. So you export entire GPIO chip. And this might be a problem if you want to uh, give some virtual machine access, but not every user, not every user in the system, not every user, uh, virtual machine. And this GPU aggregator allows you to partition existing chip to multiple ones. So, and then you could assign this partitioned GPU chips to different users. So this is, let's say, the simple uh, dummy solution uh, that you have a GPIO controller, in the kernel you have GPIO chip, and entire GPIO chip is exported to user space to its users. But with the aggregator, you put another chip in between, which takes only some of the GPIOs from the existing GPIO chip, and exports all of this some, but all, there are still some, to the user A, which could be one virtual machine, and you can also have another GPIO aggregator for different uh, user B. So, and here you could add permissions that one virtual machine can access this, other virtual machine cannot access this. This, of course, does not solve yet the problem of shared resets, but I will get there. Another use case of this aggregator is some kind of like spy dev. So the, this is the way to uh, expose for industrial IIO very simple access over some devices, but it's not covering here. So the point is that the bindings, uh, so the, how device she uses the driver is called a different way. So there's a GPO delay, and this GPO delay was added for the purpose of, con of delayed lanes. So when you have an RC circuit with capacitor and you toggle GPIO high, and this uh, GPIO high takes time to propagate over the line. And currently, all of this requires there's a one to one mapping. So only one GPIO goes, I mean, you take one and you expose one, but Easily, someone could just change it to one to many, many to one. And this would allow you that this aggregator takes one GPIO from someone and exports to one user and exports to other user as well. And this would bring you also to the uh, unresolved problems to enable counting of GPIOs. Because whatever I did here, I mentioned that regulators are handled, uh, the shared rested GPIO handles the reset shutdown GPIOs. But this is not limited there, right? There are many other devices who could share the GPIOs. For example, the MacBook Air have speakers and they all have, uh, they have some shutdown pin, but it's not exactly shutdown, it's a soft shutdown. So this should not be modeled, not represented at the reset GPIO. This kind of is different type of GPIO. And we are not allowed to 
put in device three, enable GPIOs, and call them as reset GPIOs. Device three maintainer, which is in this person here, uh, would not agree on that. So that's why there is a yeah, problem not solved for the other GPIOs. Uh, reset parses I mentioned earlier are also not solved, uh, yeah, because someone has to do the work. We have different delays for the parses. And also devices might be, uh, wants to be aware when the reset is happening. So for the case when you have to configure something in a device after the reset, like, uh, I don't know, set some clock within specific time. So some, you need to be sure that you are reset and then you have to do something. So this is still not solved. And yeah, I don't know how such driver would be working. But still the main problem here is that you might have this enable counting needs and GPIOs does not uh, support enable counting. Well, I was very fast, 15 minutes. So this is, this is it. 